okay good morning students so in our previous uh, sessions uh, we discussed uh, uh, introduction to the bearings and classification of bearings as well as uh, we also seen uh, the various types of uh, sliding contact bearings along with that uh, what is the lubrication and the modes of uh, lubrication so in that uh, in order to obtain uh, a thick film lubrication we are uh, having the two different uh, methods uh, to obtain so that is what uh, the first one is hydrodynamic lubrication that we have discussed in earlier class so that the thick film can be obtained by the rotation of the journal so there is no external means so that uh, the thick film can be obtained between the bearing surface and machine component surface and there is another uh, type of uh, lubrication system is there that is a hydrostatic system hydrostatic lubrication system that we are going to discuss in this class along with that we can also see what are the various uh, bearing materials and their, and their required uh, properties and before going that so so for the course uh, so the required Sorry. textbooks so we need to follow that we can see so i think uh, the majority of you are uh, already brought the design uh, machine design textbook uh, by v bandari in uh, for the course of uh, dmm1 so the same textbook uh, can be useful for this course also dmm2 so you can all if you are brought that uh, it was okay or otherwise you can bought that textbook but another textbook uh, that is uh, here in this course we require uh, a design data book that is a machine design design handbook by zalaluddin or psc which is very much essential to do the designs so here uh, in our in our uh, with this course uh, the design data book is very much essential so this data book can directly take it to the examination itself so design data book is allowable for the examination so every student so each and every student must and should brought this uh, design data book or design handbook by mohammad zalaluddin so for the design of uh, machine design every component in the syllabus uh, we need to take the values uh, from the design data book itself and majority of the uh, equations can also be available in the design data book so all of you students uh, can bought these uh, design data book and these are the various reference books so that is mentioned that is j shikle which is a uh, very much uh, which is a design bible it is so everybody can uh, uh, you can also obtain uh, these textbooks from the internet sources so if you want uh, anybody you can download it from the sources and uh, you can mostly brought these uh, vp bandari as well as this is very much important uh, design data book to design the machine component in the design of machine numbers too clear and next coming to the uh, next topic that is a uh, hydrostatic bearings so in the earlier uh, that is hydrodynamic type so the lubricant uh, so the thick film of lubricant can be formed only due to the rotation of the journal so we are seeing uh, the three different uh, st st stages in the hydrodynamic type in the rest condition uh, uh, the shaft uh, it's directly contact with uh, to the surface of the machine component uh, that is uh, 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 can obtain the direct metal to metal contact is there there is no zero lubrication and then at slow speed condition it can forms in a thin film that is it can operating under the boundary condition after that uh, it can go beyond the uh, boundary lubrication it can form the thick layer of lubricant uh, by means of uh, rotation of the journal which forms in wedge wedging action between the surfaces the fluid can flow through this wedging action that we are studied uh, or discussed in a earlier class and coming to the second type that is uh, so another type of uh, lubrication system that is a hydrostatic lubrication system so in this case uh, the thick film can be obtained uh, by means of external sources so in hydrodynamic so the thick film can be obtained by the rotation of the journal itself but here in this case the thick film can be obtained by means of external pressure so if you are uh, uh, look at the system so that is uh, here this outer circle represents the bearing and the inner circle that represents the shaft or journal so here uh, so in our hydrodynamic there is no any external sources are present so but in this case uh, we are providing a pump here so that is a connection from the lubricating sump so that uh, the pump can be receives the lubricating oil from the tank so that uh, and these uh, lubricating oil can be pressurized before going into the yeah, clearance between the two surfaces that is a pump it can pumps the lubricating oil by means of increasing the pressure so that uh, in the initial condition itself without rotating the journal so it can forms a uh, loop that is a thick film between the two surfaces you can clearly observe uh, this uh, animation here so the lubricant oil can be taken uh, from the lubricant uh, sum so and then the pump can be supplied to the 
into the clearance between the spaces so that uh, at the initial stage there is a, a direct metal to metal contact so but we are not going to start the journal at any moment so it is the condition so it can reduce the lubricating oil from this sum and then pressurize it so it can the pump can increase the pressure of the lubricant so it, it is not uh, directly supplying the lubricant it is uh, going to supply the lubricant uh, with the increasing pressure so uh, whatever the pressure that developed by the pump which is uh, sufficient uh, to levitate the shaft so that you can observe the lubricant oil can be supplied between the clearance spaces provided uh, between the bearing and the journal so that uh, so by the supply of oil the journal is tends to levitate in, inside the bearing clearance so that uh, which will form a a thick film between the two surfaces then only the journal is tends to start rotating so we are going to start the journal rotation only whenever we can obtain a thick film between the two surfaces clear so here uh, if you observe that uh, it is in the case uh, so there is no metal friction that is no metal friction at the rest condition clear so that is a no starting friction will be there so in a hydrodynamic type uh, the starting friction is available so why because uh, in a no slow speed conditions uh, there is a partial it can operate between the boundary lubrication so that there is a partial uh, metal to metal contact will be there so that the starting friction is very much higher in the hydrodynamic type of lubrication but coming to this case uh, we are not going to start rotating the journal so when we start the journal only whenever we can uh, form a uh, thick layer of lubricant between the two surfaces so that there is no starting friction here so that that reduces uh, the greater uh, Uh, wear as well as the tear but uh, so these uh, these type of uh, bearings are the these type of system uh, that requires uh, external sources that is a uh, pump as well as a lubricating oil continuous supply of lubricating oil through the sum so that uh, due to these external means whatever the arrangement were provided uh, uh, in the ex- by the external so that uh, it can uh, have the it, it is uh, the system is uh, relatively an expensive uh, compared to the hydrodynamic type so that is a cheaper so why because there is no external uh, these arrangements but uh, these are very expensive type of bearings uh, due to this external arrangement so why these bearings are used so so these are as i stating that it's are very much ex- expensive so why are we go with uh, hydrostatic type in what cases you can go with the hydrostatic type so 85% of the bearings you can operate in the machines so that are hydrodynamic that are operating under using the hydrodynamic system but uh, a few cases uh, we need to specifically go with uh, these hydrostatic type so where we don't require any initial friction so here you can observe we are not uh, rotating the shaft between the uh, that is a uh, rotating the shaft uh, before uh, the thick layer thick layer is formed so we can rotate the journal only whenever the thick layer of the lubricant is formed thick film is formed so that there is no initial friction in this case so where are these kind of conditions are arises so here are these uh, hydrodynamic uh, hydro sorry hydrostatic uh, lubricated bearings are specifically applicable at uh, uh, turbine shafts and uh, power plants so why we can uh, going with these kind of expensive type of lubricated bearings is uh, that is uh, so we don't require any starting friction in that case so that the power does not uh, uh, power uh, don't uh, uh, that is what uh, power is not going to uh, affect so that uh, no wastage of power will be taken place due to the friction between the two surfaces so here you can observe the turbine shafts in the power plants uh, is very much larger it will be arise from half meter to the 2 meters so even it is more so that uh, in that case if you provide a hydrodynamic type of bearings uh, which will produce a greater uh, starting friction so that will uh, reduce as the power generated from the plant so that is the case so we can uh, we can go with this type of uh, hydrostatic bearing so that there is no starting friction as well as uh, in a in the normal speeds that is a slow speed conditions uh, whenever the shaft uh, that is turbine shaft uh, contact with the bearing surface uh, there is direct metal to metal contact with that heavy load of shafts uh, rotating with in contact uh, there is a chance of uh, uh, that is some breakage of the failure of the turbine shaft so which will incur a greater cost to replace that uh, turbine shafts as well as the time so the cost as well as the time will be varied so depending upon the condition of the plant so as well as it will affects the total outcome of the power plant 
so that is the reason why you go with uh, the hydrostatic type clear so that is a uh, how the thick layer of lubricant is formed in the hydrostatic type of lubrication that is a hydro thick layer is formed by means of external source the help of external source but in the case of uh, hydrodynamic type so it is not uh, using the external sources it uses uh, its own rotation of the shaft which forms an uh, wedging action that is a wedge form wedge is uh, formed so that uh, the thick film can be formed so that is uh, by itself that is a self lubricated bearings we call it as so hydrodynamic is a self lubricated bearings and the hydrostatic type we call it as externally pressurized bearings so these are the two names we call it as so one is hydrodynamic bearings that is we discussed in the earlier class that the bearings we call it as self actuate, actuating bearings or and here uh, hydrostatic type we call it as externally pressurized bearings so in the names itself so self acting means uh, they can itself uh, generate a thick film but here externally pressurized means so that require an external pump in this case clear so as well as uh, the hydrodynamic is a uh, cheaper as well as a simple in construction so that it is cheaper and the coming to the hydrostatic uh, the uh, external components are required so that uh, the construction is a little bit uh, heavier as well as the cost is very much high that is the uh, expense which are very much expensive and these are specifically used for high load conditions and that may be used for uh, low and medium speeds this uh, meant for uh, so that is a uh, medium loads and these are meant for uh, high load conditions especially in the power plants clear so that is what a hydrostatic bearings clear and then uh, next coming to the coming to the next topic so in designs uh, so whatever the designs uh, the design can designer can make so that can be take that kind of physical reality will require materials so here uh, for the making the bearings the manufacturing of bearings so we require different materials so based upon the different applications so we discussed that uh, so the bearings can applicable are using in uh, various of applications so so from aeronautics or uh, aeroplanes that is what aircraft applications railroad applications bicycles automobiles so whatever it is uh, high hoisting devices medical diagnostic equipments so we are having the wide range of application of bearings we are seeing that so and coming to the different working conditions of the bearings so each of the application they can operate under their own unique working conditions so that the bearing whatever the bearing we are going to select so here the bearing so basic function of the bearings to support the another component so that with the external load as well as it can allow the relative motion so that so the bearing material should have the basic properties of having the strength a good strength of the material we need to select for the bearing so a part of that uh, strength so the bearing should also possess uh, the different qualities so why because the bearings can operate uh, under the various uh, types of uh, that is various conditions of the working environment so it can operate at the low speeds with the high temperatures as well as it can operate under the uh, that is uh, it will come in contact with the water so that is uh, under uh, marine applications as well as it can operate in icy engines which having the high temperatures or it can using in the aircrafts having the high fatigue uh, it can subjected to so likewise uh, so each of the application you can take uh, there is a different scenario of uh, uh, working environments so that uh, each of the bearing material the designer can select based upon the uh, some of the uh, factors that is uh, some of the bearing materials it should possess so that is uh, what uh, we call it as the properties of the bearing materials that is a required of the desired properties of the bearing materials so which will starts with uh, compressive strength so as we have seen uh, in the previous uh, cases of hydrodynamic and hydrostatic so the supporting load uh, the load supported uh, by the uh, journal can tends to levitate so in the bearing clearance only by means of the pressure developed between the two surfaces so here uh, the pressure developed between the two surfaces should be very much high so we are seeing that uh, so the whatever the pressure developed either by means of the wedging action between the surfaces as well as we can uh, supply either we can supply between the by means of external pump so the pressure that developed between the surfaces that is pressure we are uh, providing uh, between the surfaces that pressure uh, 
is used to limit the shaft inside the clearance and that pressure is very much greater compared to the normal pressure developed in the bearing. So due to these high pressure development are developed inside the clearance of the bearing, so that will cause us the deformation. So in order to avoid such deformation in the bearings, so the bearing material should have the highest compressive strength. So that uh, by the generation of these high pressures uh, at that uh, bearing clearance, that should not be allowed to deform plastically between the, that is uh, by the means of the bearing. Clear? So that is uh, the first, uh, very first property, desired property of the bearing. So that is a compressive strength. So it should be a high. So it would require a high, high compressive strength values for the material we are going to select. And the second one is fatigue strength. So we know that what is fatigue that we have already studied in our earlier course. The fatigue means the repeated loads or reversal loads or completely reversal loads that is a cyclic load. With respect to the time duration if it is a loads may be acting. So that causes a failure by means of fatigue that is a that causes a failure by means of crack or crack like defects which will propagate like a crack. So that is sudden fracture. So, in order to avoid, so here the bearings can also subjected to the repeated loads in the applications of uh, IC engines or aircraft engines or whatever you can take in a conditional manner. So, under the different working conditions, the bearings can also subject to the fatigue type of loads. Clear? So, that uh, whenever the fatigue type of loads it can subject, so it should not fail by means of fracture. That is fatigue failure it should not uh, go by means of uh, failure of fatigue. So that uh, whatever the material we are going to select, so the applications, so that has the highest value of fatigue strength. Again, it should also high value of fatigue strength. Clear? So to avoid the failure by means of crack or the sudden fracture in those applications, the material should possess of highest fatigue strength. So I am coming to the next desirable property that is conformability. So here, uh, in what is conformability means before going that, uh, you can see, so whenever we can make a uh, manufacturing of machines, we should not uh, manufacture with a clear uh, accuracy. So that is exact, we cannot provide that exact dimensions provided by the designer. There is uh, some misalignments will be there, there is some inaccuracies will be there due to the operator or due to the machine errors uh, which can cause uh, some of the errors. In the machine. So that while assembling of shaft, there is a chance of misalignments of axis of shafts. So that uh, the whatever the bearing we are going to assemble uh, you for the for uh, align the shaft, it causes the misalignment. So here what is the conformability means? So whenever we can assemble with this uh, slight misalignment, it can adjust itself uh, by the plastic deformation with the minimum wear. So that uh, whenever we can assemble the components with the misalignment that will cause a plastic deform, but uh, it cannot give the greater wear. So whenever you can uh, align uh, that is uh, uh, with a misalignment, so that will cause us a greater wear. So that uh, we cannot uh, expect that uh, greater wear so that we need to uh, require to replace the bearings with a uh, very soon that is uh, we cannot uh, operate for a longer duration. So that uh, we can we cannot allow to provide uh, uh, a greater wear it will not allow to uh, generate a greater wear. So that is what conformability. Whenever you can uh, uh, assemble with the misalignments of shafts, there is some misalignment uh, due to the anacrisis caused. So it can allow these uh, uh, machine components uh, with a minimum wear. That is what uh, the property we call it as conformability. That is the ability to withstand the misalignments with a minimum wear. And coming to the embeddability. So what is embeddability means we are operating the bearings uh, in some of the conditions like uh, dust and dirt or uh, some of the sand uh, regions so that uh, there is a chance of uh, those particles will come in contact with the bearing. So whenever these particles are come in contact with the bearing or uh, included in, or introduced inside the bearing, so these particles should not produce uh, any scores that is uh, any indentations upon the journal or on the bearing surface. So whenever it can form, uh, they may be also allowed to uh, making these, uh, providing the wear, so that it generates wear. So that is what embeddability means, it can absorb that dust and dirt, so without uh, 
providing any scores or any inundations on the bearing material. Okay, that is the ability to observe the dust and dirt upon the surfaces so that uh, it should not uh, give any scores upon the material. So, material should have the embeddability that is absorbing capacity of dirt and the bondability means uh, so, what is bondability? Bonding is known. So, that is the sticking of uh, two materials. That is what bonding is called. So, bonding is uh, known as. So, here the materials can be laid upon the another surface. So, for the high strength steels, that is a high load conditions, the bearings are to be manufactured by means of layers of material. So, that uh, due to the layers of materials, it should bond uh, to form the high strength steel. So, that is what we call it as bondability. And coming to the corrosion resistance, the bearings are always uh, in contact with the lubricant. So, here uh, whenever the lubricant is passes, that is in contact uh, with the longer duration, it is in continuous contact with the bearings, it should not uh, get any corrosion uh, properties. So, it should avoid uh, the corrosion, so that the material uh, having the greater corrosion resistance. So, it should have high again high corrosion resistance so that it will always the lubricant will always in contact with the bearing surfaces so that uh, we, so that uh, should not uh, cause any corrosion so the bearing material should have high bearing corrosion resistance and coming to the thermal conductivity which means the bearings uh, can operate in that is metal to metal contact will be there which generates uh, friction so due to the friction between the surfaces that increases uh, a heat that generates the heat between the surfaces so here uh, the material, the bearing material should take away that heat that is directly it can conduct the heat from inside to the outside. For example, you can take an IC engines, the combustion can take place inside the cylinder. So here the cylinder has to relieve those heat that is uh, to take away that heat uh, in a faster fashion from inside the combustion chamber inside of the cylinder to the outside of the that is through fins or whatever you can provide that. So it has to uh, transfer that heat from inside to the outside. So what is the need to take away that heat? So the heat conductivity. So without, uh, if you are not allowing it to conduct the heat, the heat does not transmit from uh, the inside of the bearing to the outside. So whenever it is not causing the bearing is going to cease. Clear or the, the heat, the heat will be increases due to that the viscosity may change. So that uh, due to the viscosity changes, it may decrease in uh, uh, that is uh, what the uh, lubricant film that is uh, the film thickness can be depends upon the viscosity so that uh, the film is going to break again the metal to metal contact will be there so there is a chance so that the thermal conductivity of the material should also be high so that whatever the heat generated between the surfaces that is the journal and the bearing it should can conduct easily towards the that is outside to the atmosphere and conduct coming to the another property that is a thermal expansion so what is thermal expansion means uh, if the if it is allowed to heat the heat is generated that you are discussing that so that uh, by means of the generation of the heat it should not uh, expand very much that is a uh, there is a clearance we are provided between the two surfaces if if the it is having the high thermal expansion so that whenever it is exposed to the heat that generated between the surfaces it automatically that is uh, it is going to expand so that it will uh, uh, clear the clear that will affect the clearance between the surfaces clear so that uh, so the thermal expansion of the material should be low so whenever it is affecting with the temperature that is uh, increasing in temperature it should not going to increase the size of that is a uh, dimensional changes should not allow the material so apart of these are the main uh, properties of the desired properties of the material apart of that uh, this material we can also go with the uh, that is uh, easy to manufacture the component so that uh, as well as that is one of the property easy to manufacture so material you have selected it is uh, easy to manufacture that is in the changing of form so it should be very much easier it, it requires to easier process so to go with not go with the uh, heavier uh, uh, processes to manufacture as well as uh, there is one more property that is uh, it should not uh, allow the wear for the machine component so so that the material should be softer compared to the whatever the component it is going to support. So likewise, uh, we are having the many of the properties. But coming to these, uh, so how the material is going to select means, uh, so we don't uh, expect the, all the properties from the same material, but we should compromise with the material based upon our required working conditions. 
clear so we don't expect the temperature strength along with the bondability and the immutability and all these uh, properties whatever discussed here in the same material but we can select the bearing material based upon our application that is our working environment and we should compromise with any of the properties and we can go with a different selection of different bearing materials clear so let us uh, see the different bearing materials that is uh, majorly using in application so based upon the applications we can go with the different uh, material these are the uh, so majorly using bearing materials so one is a babbit material so the main uh, babbit material is a composition of copper uh, uh, tin bear, lead as well as the uh, uh, antimony so if the components of a tin is greater we call it as a tin based babbits and if it is a lead component is greater we call it as a lead based babbits so here the babbit material is generally used as a thin layer of uh, uh, material upon the surface of the steel so you can observe clearly here so this is a layer of uh, babbit material that placed on the steel backing so clear so here uh, these babbit materials are greaterly used for the pressure ranges of 7 to 14 uh, uh, newton per mm square so as well as a low to medium uh, high uh, speeds and especially these are working uh, in a uh, steam turbines uh, uh, steam engines etc clear that is what babbit materials the majorly we are using these as in layers of uh, so 0 0.05 to 0 0.15 mm layer of layer of material can be laid upon the surface of the steel bag so that is what babbit material and the bronze you know that that is a copper alloys that is a bronze again it is a gun metal and phosphor bronze so these are uh, the gun metal is used uh, to the pressures up to that is more than 14 newton per mm square and the phosphor bronze up to 10 newton per mm square so i am coming to the cast iron so where these are very much it is a cheaper material for the bearings so these are used where the lubrication is adequate as well as for less expensive material it is but it can operate only with the pressure ranges of that is a low pressure condition so it can use in the at the pressure of up to 3.5 newton per mm square and silver is also one of the uh, using material but uh, this is uh, used specifically where uh, uh, so why because we know that the silver is a costlier material so that uh, it is it is an expensive material we can only go with the silver whenever the fatigue strength is very much required so that uh, these silver or the silver material is mainly used in the bearings for the connecting rod in aircraft engines and as well as again silvers can also be electroplated in the similar fashion of the babbit material upon the steel backing material and coming to the non bearings so these non bearings we go with uh, so whenever uh, so again these non bearing non metallic bearings are uh, carbon graphite bearings and soft rubber and wood and nephlon and nylon and teflon which are the plastic material so you can observe here it is a uh, nylon uh, bearing so nylon or plastic bearings uh, so carbon graphite uh, where i can observe uh, so the simple uh, uh, there is no lubricant is provided you can go with the graphite so majorly these non bearing uh, non metallic bearings are go with uh, uh, can uh, go with these kind of metals whenever uh, we don't uh, uh, require there is a greater corrosion properties as well as these rubber bearings are used for uh, high shock and vibrational effects so that is uh, majorly these bearings are used in marine applications so where you can observe the greater shocks and it can observe the vibrations as well as uh, the rubber uh, does not corrode uh, so that uh, it can operate in uh, marine applications and wood bearings and the nylon and teflon bearings so clear so which are uh, e you have, uh, these are the various material bearing materials you can use uh, in the uh, normal application that is applications based upon uh, the our uh, working conditions we don't expect all the properties so apart of that you can also go with the alloys for the bearings uh, for the in the newer technologies we are having the different uh, various of materials evolving in a day to day so that uh, we can go with the uh, different materials in order to obtain our required properties uh, according to our working conditions clear so that is what uh, various properties various properties and different materials and coming to the today's class so far we discussed that uh, that is a hydrostatic lubrication so 
that is one of the type of lubrication to form the thick film layer of lubricant so that uh, it is externally pressurized uh, the pressurized lubricant can be pumped into the clearance through the external pump so that is what hydrostatic bearing and we see in the desired properties of uh, bearing material so having the higher compressive strength having the higher hafetic strength should have the ability to uh, withstand the plastic deformation with minimum wear that is a conformability and it can ability to observe the dust and dirt that is called embeddability it should have bondability so that uh, thin layer of uh, uh, lubric that is a thin la layer of uh, material should bond so and then uh, it should have the high thermal conductivity so that it can transfer the heat from inside of the bearing to the outside that is exposed that is heat uh, deliberated and then uh, it should have the high sorry low thermal expansion so it should not uh, vary the or affect the dimensions of the bearing and we are also seeing the various uh, bearing materials so uh, the generally we are using so that is the babbit materials used for uh, steam engines or steam turbines or up to the pressures the application of the pressures from 7 to 14 newton per mm square and uh, we are having the bronze uh, bronze gun metal and phosphor bronze again uh, it may be used for higher pressures more than 4 10 or 14 newton per mm square and we go with the cast iron with the low pressures 3.5 newton per mm square and silver so which is a high uh, costliest material but we can go with the uh, electroplated uh, layer of uh, silver for the applications so like uh, aircraft engines connecting rod uh, aircraft engines and uh, there is also non metallic uh, bearings can also be used like uh, graphite material or rubber or wood or it may be plastic that is the teflon or nylon clear and in the next class we are going to see the terms used in the bearings that is hydrostatic journal bearing so we are stick to the hydrostatic hydrodynamic type not the hydrostatic type so as per our syllabus we are having the hydrodynamic uh, design and uh, we can also see the so how the uh, bearing characteristic number that affects the coefficient of friction between the two surfaces thank you